everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time, a much longer time than I would have liked. I am just trying to figure out my life. But I thought I would do a tutorial on a light horse or the Asiatic body type. These are horses. These are your Arabians. These are your Akeltekes. These are called hot bloods. They are horses that originated on the Asian plains. They are very hardy animals. They can survive on very little or benefit very much from hyper nutritious food. Akeltekes were fed mutton fat and Arabians were fed camel's milk and dates. These are horses that are able to thrive in hardy conditions. If you want a horse that is pretty loyal and intelligent and relatively fast, that is an Arabian. Arabian is like the, the one that'll get you across the desert the fastest. The Akelteke is more for long distance. I think the back on this actually turns out a little too long. You have to be careful of that because a horse that has a back that is too long is just bad. It's it's not the ideal equine form. Like I try to get my measurements right by getting the square in this guy's shoulders and everything, but I still think his back looks too long and I like short backs on horses because Spanish horses which is the type that I drew last time have very short backs one of the ways you can tell like well what what are these hot blood horses what are these Asiatic how can you tell an Asiatic type it's shoulder blades a Spanish horse will pretty much have smooth withers you can just kind of get a smooth line any of the horses that show off this Asiatic type will have a little whoop in their withers. I call it the axe blade withers because they are very pronounced in the Akelteke, which is like kind of almost like hyper hyper bred to have these ideal desert horse attributes. So I think that's kind of why it shows a more like average Asiatic type that it's just like you could see this horse in a movie being ridden by desert people and you'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, people riding Frisians in the desert maybe not quite so plausible. I'm looking at you, Tom Cruise's version of the mummy. 15 minutes after that movie ended, his horse is dead. Asiatic horses, I cannot overstate how, how tough and hardy they are. The last people that conquered Russia in the winter were the Mongols. And the reason that they could do it is because their horses came from a wasteland and they were like, oh my god, look at all this food everywhere. And that's how they conquered Russia. Nobody has been able to do it since. The Mongols actually rode a small type called a tarpan, and they are now extinct, uh, functionally extinct. There are still numbers, but guess where they are? Chernobyl. The irradiated forest of Chernobyl. So yeah, like the horses that Genghis Khan fell in love with so much, and you know, he had like over a hundred horses, like the guy would cry to learn that they're extinct. The Asiatic type shares similar attributes with the tarpan. They are hardy, their hooves are hard. Arabians are very good for like sprinting and, and races because they were used in raiding all the time. That you, you went to your neighbor's tent city in the desert and you stole their horses by riding your horses into their camp and stealing them. And mares were the best for doing this kind of raiding because they would not call out to strange horses, whereas a stallion would. So you could sneak up on, on this camp if you had mares. And that was why they were considered the superior war horse, which is apparently news to a whole bunch of people who ride Western because they're like, oh, mares are dumb and they don't make any decisions in the herd. Regardless of how it looks, a horse herd is a matriarchy. It is not a patriarchy, as many people seem to think. You want to really pay attention to the line of the shoulders, because these horses have this as an attribute. It's a physical tell, so you can't get it wrong. It's a very subtle curve on the shoulders, and you want to pay attention to it. I think I'm a little off here. I did this maybe four months ago, and I'm already looking at myself like, hmm, I could do better. My eye's not as good as it could be on this. 
Always draw to improve. Always draw iteratively. You're never going to get it right on the first pass. And I think that's what a lot of, like, especially beginner artists try to do, is they try and do everything all at once. You can't spin ten plates at once. Why not spin one plate called composition and get that out of the way? A whole bunch of stuff on drawing horses is just reference, reference, reference. Do you want to copy this photograph? Do you want to copy this photograph? It's nothing about looking at the horse as a three-dimensional animal. I want to make it clear, I'm trying to be an equine artist. If there are people out there trying to be an equine artist, this is the kind of drawing lesson for you. I am trying to show you that there are different types of horses, and if you want to pay attention and do your research, you need to understand the kind of environment that these horses lived in, and also how old they are. The Arabian and the Akalteke are both about 4,000 years old, possibly older than that. Turks basically bred the Akalteke, and that is the Turkoman horse, if anybody out there has played Red Dead Redemption. And these horses are incredibly old. They have direct ties to the Scythians, which were the very first people that ever selectively bred horses. Everybody else was apparently just riding them and eating them and letting them do what they wanted. And the Scythians were the first people to be like, hey, maybe we should breed these horses to, like, look nicer. Basically, right next to the Scythians is Turkey. And that's where, like, the first people, like the Turks, really started to become horsemen. People of the horse. And that has been really interesting to research. These horses don't usually have a lot of mane and tail. If they do, it takes a very long time for them to grow. This is different from the Spanish type. Spanish types have, quote, abundant mane and tail. Which means that it grows easily and it grows pretty heavily. These horses need to shed heat they need to do body regulation so they don't need a really heavy mane and tail if you see a little thoroughbred in these horses that's the reason why they're the ancestors of the modern thoroughbred modern thoroughbred was basically what is it the god dolphin arabian the danforth arabian and the byerly turk which is largely believed to be two arabians and an akel teke of sorts unfortunately the white people that were taking these horses from their native land called all of them Arabian and didn't bother to make the distinction. So a lot of the records are a little skewed, but it is believed that the Byerly Turk was a Turkoman horse, whereas the other two are pretty well recorded as Arabians. Again, I think this guy's back is too long, so hey, look at me! You can mess up even when you're, you're doing this kind of structural drawing. I hope that this is helpful for people. I hope that you possibly learned something about the horse. Please like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you next time. Hopefully it won't be nearly as long. Thank you.